So I left you when we set up this service thing, when we injected it, and when we were able to render our data which is stored in the service. Now I want to go a step further and be able to actually add them to the collection and build up a collection. This part here isn't working at all right now. So let's make it work. I'll start in the collectible service again. Here I'll add another private property which I'll name collection. This will also be of type collectible array, but initially it is empty because this should be the collection of the user which is empty at the beginning, let's say. Therefore, I also want to have a new get method here, get collection, which should return me this collection because of course I want to get access to this private property. So here I will return this collection, just like I return this collectibles for the available collectibles. I also need two other methods. I want to have an add to collection method, which allows me to add an item from the market to the collection. And I want to have a remove from collection method to, well, do the opposite or to basically just remove it. Well, when we add something to the collection, we will certainly need to pass the item we want to add. And this will be of type collectible. Do you see the advantage of creating a custom type? We can be much more explicit. In this method here, what I want to do is I want to check if my collection here already contains this item. I can do this with index off and see what the index of this item is. And if it is anything else than minus one, which we would get if it is not part of the application uh, collection, then I want to return. So I don't want to add it if it already is registered in the collection. Only if we do get minus one, which means the item is not part of the collection yet, only in this case do I want to run this collection push item, which now adds this item to the collection. This is adding an item. Removing it is also pretty simple. Here I want to take my collection and well first I need to pass the item of course, so this will also be a collectible. And in my collection, I want to use the splice method, which allows me to basically change this array. And here I want to use it to remove an item or an item from the array. Therefore, I need to know where to start splicing. I do this by using this collection index off again, but here of course, to find the position of the item, of which I know it is part of this collection, because I will later on simply well, be able to call the remove from collection method here from my collection component, which only contains items in the collection, but, but you'll see what I mean. So here, this is the, the part where I want to start. And then I add one as a second argument to tell TypeScript JavaScript here, only remove this item. So start at the index of this item and then remove one item, which of course is this one item I want to remove. So with this, I got methods to add and remove items to and from the collection. And now it's finally time to hook up the event listeners and this collection component to use all these methods. Let's start with the market component. Here in the on add to collection method, I don't want to use an alert anymore. Instead here, I want to use my collectible service and call the add to collection method to then pass an item. Now the problem is I don't have that item yet. It would be great if I could get the item as an argument in this method. The item of course should be of type collectible. So let's add this type and this import up here. How do I get this item into, or into this method as an argument? I can go to my template of the market component and here in the click listener, I can simply pass an argument. I do have the item here since I loop through all the items. So I can simply pass item. Keep in mind this item will be a collectible because I'm looping through my collectibles array, which as we know, only holds collectibles. Therefore I can pass it here and we can also be more explicit about this and add the collectible array type here in the market component when we declare it. So with this, I'm now passing the item and I'm adding it because I set this up in the service. But of course we can't see this because in the collection component, we're not looping, we're not really having dynamic code, so let's work on this next. In my collection component, in the TypeScript class, I'll add a property, collected items for example, which will be of the collectible array type we used before. 
So make sure to add this import here. Initially, this should also be an empty array, but we will of course also inject our service here. So as before, I'll name it collectible service and inject it in the constructor here by assigning the type. Also make sure to add collectible service as an import here. And with that, I can initialize it here in the ng on init method, where I want to set this collected items, so this property here, equal to collectible service get collection. This will fetch all my items in the collection, or this will fetch this array and assign it here. Note, as arrays, like objects, are reference types in JavaScript, the array we use here will be one and the same. We only use one array throughout the whole application, the one created here in the service. When as I assign it here, I'm actually assigning a pointer to the same array. This is how reference type work in, in JavaScript, basically. So if that is totally new to you, definitely have a look at reference types in JavaScript to understand what's happening here. It is important to understand because it is the answer for the question why if I add a new item to the collection, it will later on automatically update because it is one and the same array, not two different arrays, one array. So this is the array from the service I'm assigning to this array here in my component, again, the same array. And with this setup, I can now loop through it here in my collection component HTML file. Again, I'll use the ng for loop here to loop through them with let item of collected items. So pretty similar to the market component. And then here in the batch, I want to use string interpolation to output the item type. Here, anything, I want to output the item description like this. But I also want to do something else. If I save this and we have a look at the application once it reloads, you don't see anything from the collection because I haven't added anything. Once I click here, you see it up here, which is great. So the collection is working. You also see if I click an item multiple times, it isn't added because I had this check if it was already part of the collection. Now, since this is working, it would also be great if upon initially loading this, we would see some info text, something like, please add something to the collection. In order to do this, I'll add another structural directive. I'll place it on the unordered list here. And the one I want to use is ngif, which means, well, check this condition on whether you should attach this element and all nested elements to the DOM or not. So this part here. The condition I want to check is, if collected items actually is, well, longer than zero. So if it does have any items. If this is the case, this unordered list will be rendered. Otherwise, I want to show this h3 tag where I say start adding items to your collection on the market, something like this. And of course, here I need to add the opposite condition. So I want to display this only if the length is equal to null or to zero. So only in this case do I want to display that. If I save this and let it reload, you should now see this text here below the market. But as soon as I add something, the text is gone. Well, the final step, of course, is to make this remove button here work. We already set up the remove method in the service. So hooking it up to the component is really easy. In my HTML code, I'll add a click listener here. And here I want to call the on remove from collection method. Of course, you may choose another name. I'm going to copy this method name and in my TypeScript code, I'll add it just like this. Of course, here I should also get the item passed to this method. So let's pass item in our template. Again, we do have type we do have item available since we loop through it here. And then in this on remove from collection, I can call my collectible service and then simply remove from collection and pass the item just like that. This is how easy this is. 
With that, we set up this template. And if I now reload the application a final time, what you will see is if I add something here and then I click remove, it's now gone again. And also notice if all items are removed, we start seeing this text again. With that, we made a huge step and now we got a almost fully working application. The missing part, of course, is routing. Let's have a look at this in the next lecture or in the next video.